Innovation 3D. Uh, we're here today to discuss and guide you through the assembly, disassembly, uh, usage and deployment of your protective visors. Let's get to it. We recommend protective visors for single use to avoid cross-contamination between infected individuals and wearers of these equipment. A single device should be limited to one individual user. Repeated disinfection washes can be employed at the user's own risk and should only be done if there are no other alternatives. The visor is designed to provide limited protection against airborne pathogens, including the COVID-19 virus. More specifically, against aerosol particulates ejected from infected patients and individuals through coughing, close contact talking and manual handling. These protective visors should be used in conjunction with additional personal protective equipment, such as goggles and face masks. Step 1. Preparing protective visors for disinfection. Wash your hands and preferably wear gloves prior to assembly and or disassembly of protective visors or any other PPE equipment. Also, wear a protective mask during the assembly process when possible. Prior to assembly or disinfection, check that all equipment is to hand. This includes a single PETG face shield with double-sided protective film removed, a single headband visor, a single forehead cushioning pad, one elastic strap, and the protective visor and PPE usage and disclaimer documentation. Step 2. Disinfection process. All components of the visors provided should be cleaned in between uses. We recommend using disinfectant mediums such as isopropyl alcohol at strengths higher than 70%, antibacterial and antiviral soap wash in warm water below 50 degrees centigrade or where possible ozone cleaning processes. This device is not suitable for autoclaving. The device should be sterilized on a sterile, smooth surface and left to dry in a sterile, dry environment. The device can be stored in a similarly sterile, dry and cool place that is preferably out of direct sunlight. We recommend disinfecting the visor before each deployment in the workplace. Step 3. Visor Assembly Take the elastic strap provided, or strapping of your own design, and the 3D printed headband. These two components will be pre-assembled upon delivery. However, prior to a disinfection wash, you may choose to disassemble the visor completely, and this will need to be reattached before redeployment. Begin by tying a single knot no more than 2cm from the end of the elasticated strap. Feed the unknotted end of the elasticated strap through one of the outer holes in the headband. Continue feeding the strap back out and in again through the two slits proximal to the initial hole on one side of the visor. Duplicate the strap threading process in reverse on the alternate side. Finally, tie a single knot on the unknotted side of the elastic strap and adjust this so that the tension on the strap is suitable for the wearer. Mount the PETG face shield on the headband using the second hole from the right. Hold it with your thumb. Carefully straighten the right side of the headband along the face shield and insert the pin. As soon as the pin is through, you can release the thumb. The headband is flexible enough to aid in manipulating the pins into the holes to create a firm fit. Continue on to the other side of the headband using the same approach. Straighten the headband and avoid severe bending of the face shield throughout. The face shield and the headband should form a rigid mechanical bond once assembled and should not wobble or detach without undue force being applied. Application of the forehead cushioning is optional. Take the assembled visor and a single forehead pad. Make sure all surfaces are clean and dry. Remove the sticky backed paper from the pad. Apply the pad to the dry surface of the inner forehead band of the headband. Firmly press together until the adhesion is complete. Wearers can use their own form of padding but should do so in a safe, responsible way. We recommend disinfecting the visor before deployment in the workplace. The protective visor is then ready for deployment. Responsibility and use of the protective visor is the sole responsibility of the user, who should follow cost protocols and practices laid out by their governing bodies when utilizing any PPE. Final step, general advice. After general use of protective visors or following an infectious incident where the visor has become contaminated, we recommend the visor be replaced responsibly with a new visor to prevent cross-contamination. In the event where a visor is reused, we recommend the forehead cushioning pad be removed and disposed of between washes. Disassembly of the protective visors should follow a reverse methodology of the preceding steps 1, 2 and 3. So we hope this information guide has helped. Um, we're really glad that we're able to help our community in the way that we are, have been for the last number of weeks now and hope to continue doing for the coming months ahead. Um, if you have any constructive feedback, then please get in touch with us directly or through the line manager, depending on um, the situation. 
Um, if you have any ideas of your own um, to help stop spread COVID-19 within the community or with a broader scale project in mind, then do let us know. Um, your ingenuity combined with our resources might actually um, be a good partnership, so it might be worth getting in touch from that side of things. Uh, and finally, we want to say thank you very much to all the key workers and uh, healthcare workers out there who are doing an absolute bang up job and have been doing for weeks now and will be doing for the next few months, well, a number of months ahead. Um, and finally, just want to make sure that we want to wish everyone to stay safe and be kind because we're all in this together. Thank you.